question for the day is, will new expensive wheels make you faster? And I'm not so sure. I thought the answer to that was yes. <laughs> all in all, my bike used to weigh a little bit over 20 pounds. Now it weighs a little bit under 20 pounds. We shaved about 1.28, I think the final number was about 1.28 pounds off of the bike by changing out to these Fulcum 3s. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn my lights off. There, that one's dead already and that one's dead. And these are made a little bit differently than my other wheels. These have got, they're kind of like veins almost, they're round spokes. And they have some, some aerodynamic cutouts in here and they're definitely lighter. So the question is, my husband Bill gave them to me for my birthday and my birthday is in a couple weeks, but they came in a box that was a little bit bent. So I think he was worried and wanted to make sure that they were in good shape. So he went ahead and put them on my bike, gave them to me and put them on my bike. And this is my second run testing them out. On the first run, I didn't want to say anything until I'd had time to really just ride them by myself. It seemed like it was a lot harder to get up to speed, like it took a lot more effort to get up to speed. Once you get up to speed, like if you could get up to 17 and get over 17, then it's a little bit, a little bit easier to maintain, but throughout the ride Saturday, I just felt like I was putting out so much more wattage just to get the same effect as my old like air axis. I would show them to you, but my husband knows that I'm not really good with change, and I think he took those wheels and took them to the workshop and got them away from me so that I couldn't put them back on my bike. Right, Jasper? So, I think that I'm struggling with the idea that Bill has told me, and he's been cycling for years. Bill has told me that everybody has a set point, and that no matter what you do, you're not going to get any faster than your set point. And that kind of worries me because I've spent the last two months trying to move that set point up, trying to get faster, trying to get to 17.4, trying to get to 18.5, trying to get to 19.6 for my averages. And if that really is the case and you have a set point and you can't get any faster, then it kind of makes you wonder, like, why am I killing myself trying to go faster? <laughs> so, and how do you know when you finally reach your set point? Somebody tell me in the comments below. How do you know when you have reached your set point? Uh, how do you know when you've pushed and pushed and pushed until you've gotten as fast as you can get? So that's that's one question. Is there really a set point? Am I really stuck here at 15.5? <laughs> and the other is if expensive wheels could make you faster. And I, I'm going to do some research. I'm going to go ahead and say what I think about these wheels. And then I'm going to go do some research and figure out if it's really the case. I think that these wheels are designed for 17 and up. I think they're for someone who is already riding quite easily at 17 and has no trouble getting up to 17, 18, 19, and that once you get up to that speed, then they float a bit, then they have a little bit of lift, then they're, they're really coming into their own. I think what's happening is I'm kind of stuck in that 15 to 17 where I can get up to 17 pretty easily, but I'm not necessarily holding 17, 18. Although I was getting to where I could hold 17 and 18 on my old wheels, I find that I, I feel like I'm back to square one, like I was riding 14 and 15 today, and it was hard, it was difficult, where last week, riding on the old wheels, I was riding 16, 17, 18, and it was comfortable. And I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was comfortable. So I'm wondering if maybe these are designed that they're faster, uh, they're faster as you go faster, and it just it takes a bit more effort to get them up to that speed. And the problem is that it's right over that hump is where they get better, and I'm still riding right here on the hump. And so I'm always riding at the point where they're the most difficult to get moving. And that's why I'm more tired after my ride. And uh, I don't know, so I'm gonna do some research. I'm gonna see if that's what's going on, and I will let you know if 
there are, there must be some sort of a chart like there are for sailboats, you know, different points of sail, different sail trim, different wind speeds, how fast that boat's hull is going to go. There's got to be something like that for these wheels that's going to say where, where's their sweet spot, where are they the best, where are they the most efficient. That's, that's what I'm going to be looking for. So I will let you know. Thanks for watching. And, uh, this is my ISM saddle, which is fantastic. And I learned that this little spot that's in it, it's great for putting yourself in when you're, when you're trying to turn off your garmin. Um, got my dazer right here. Didn't have to use it today. My heart only stopped a couple times when dogs, I heard them and rush and they were behind a fence. <sighs> Thank goodness. Also, I have to give a shout out to Bander Kit, and this is one of the one of the more recent VIP kits. And whichever chamois is in this one, I had no discomfort whatsoever the entire time. And I don't know if that's because I've been using the Cycle Booty system of the post ride cleanser and then the post ride cream, but I'm having less trouble than I have ever had with saddle stores. I know that the ISM seat was part of that, but that I put on probably about two years ago. My bike turns four in a couple days. <laughs> Hard to believe I've had her for four years and only in the last two months have really felt like I'm getting somewhere with pushing myself and getting out front and being the one to train. I'm like, excuse me, what are you doing? Not on camera. Are you cleaning it? I think he's cleaning his privates on camera. I said something about cycle baby and that was it. Anyway, I will let you know what my research finds if expensive wheels can make you faster. I suspect the answer is they can make your bike lighter, but only you can make yourself faster. And there's no guarantee if it feels right and really is a set point and you can't. Oh, if you can't get past your set point. So, Okay, Jasper is waiting here, as always, for the post-ride critique. He's ready to tell me how my ride went. Ooh. And probably everybody else will come here in a moment. Tell me what they think too. Kiki! Smooth! You guys coming for the post ride critique? <sighs> post ride critique! <laughs> very, very boring for this kitty, I guess. <laughs> Alright. So, post ride critique. Carmen's been down for a couple days, so I've been keeping my numbers. Well, actually, I started keeping my numbers on a paper before Garmin went down, and now I'm really glad I did. I mean, I can access them on the computer and on my phone and all that, but still, it's kind of fun to, to look right here. So, the question is, will more expensive wheels make you faster? The quick answer to that is probably no. But I did a lot of research, and, and I read where switching to these Fulcrum 3s could possibly increase my speed by 0.3 to 0.5 miles per hour. And the thing is, there's no scientific test for this. My husband and I did a trial the other day where I warmed up up the road and then I rode down the road and he timed me and I was actually four seconds slower on these new wheels than I was on the previous. And I don't know if it's, I didn't put out as much energy or I stood up one time and didn't stand up the next time. I mean, it wasn't a scientific test. So more of a scientific test is going to be in the ride after ride after ride. And looking at my Garmin numbers, I've been running anywhere from 15.5 to 16.2 has kind of been my averages on Garmin. And I think right now... Garmin said, oh, how do I get back to my summary? I think I was like 16.1 or 16.2. So, yeah, yeah, you got something to add? So, possibly, but there's an emotional factor to that as well. And the emotional factor is because these wheels were a gift, of course, I want to prove that I am worthy of such an expenditure <laughs> that I am probably pushing myself even harder than I was pushing before. Now on RunKeeper, my averages were always around, somewhere around 15, five to 15, eight, scanning up and down, 15, five to 15, eight. 
really was my averages. It's interesting how Runkeeper does it one way. I think I get a little bit more penalty from them when we stop and switch water bottles, stuff like that. My frame's a little bit smaller than a man's frame would be, I suppose, so, or at least my husband's frame, and so the triangle is so small that it's hard to get the back water bottle out, so usually I stop, swap them, and, you know, so I think I get a little bit more penalty from Runkeeper on that, where I don't on Garmin. Uh, my time was a little bit faster, about 45 seconds faster today than the other day, so maybe I'm getting used to it. So my original theory was that these wheels are so much lighter that they don't have a lot of momentum, and I think what I'm really, really finding is because I'm running somewhere between 15.5 and 16.5 pretty consecutively, cons consistently, consistently would be the right word. Because I'm running 15.5 to 16.5, I am always right below where they start to experience some lift and really start just spinning. And I'm, I'm forever bringing myself up and back down, up and back down through the area where they're so light and they're not, I'm not yet getting the benefit of the lift from them. Once you get up to 17, it's not that hard to crank it up to 18, but it's the getting there. And it's and because of my speed, I'm forever in a day up and down between 15.5 and 16.5 accelerating through that and accelerating through those slow spots. The other thing I think is a beginner, when you're a beginner like I am, I am not, my cadence isn't that regular. And when I reach for a water bottle, it took me up until two weeks ago to learn how to actually deal with my water bottle and I finally learned to um, go up in gears, make it a little bit harder so that even though I'm letting off with my one leg to get it out of the way, my other leg is taking up the slack and before that I would just stop pedaling to get my water bottle. It took me forever to learn to keep pedaling and now I have a system where I can do it. So I think what happens is when you're, when you're learning, your cadence isn't really good, you're not really <sighs> regular and disciplined and always on that stroke and so you are you let off pressure and then you put it back on you let off pressure and you put it back on but with a heavier wheel you are probably going to coast through that without any loss of speed what i'm finding with these is if i take off the pressure whoo my speed plummets and yes, that's probably also a factor of windage, and I probably, I am not the most aerodynamic creature, and I have a lot of windage, and that's the other thing that's slowing me down. So, still a learning process, and what it still means is I've still got to get stronger up in that 17 mile an hour, got to get stronger in there, and once I'm stronger in there, then I'm better cycling partner, and then Bill and I together can have a lot higher speed. In fact, I need to mark which of these are, uh, which of these are the two of us together because those are going to be a little bit higher because we're going to ride at a higher speed together than I would by myself. I um, have to tell you something really funny about this IM seat. I don't know if you can see this, this ISM seat. So the ISM saddle actually holds my phone, which is, it's kind of cool because when I get back from the ride, usually I want to take a picture of whoever is waiting for me for the post-ride critique or the turkeys in the yard or whatever and this actually fits I use the life proof case because uh, you know you do sweat and you do go through rain and things like that sometimes and it fits absolutely perfectly and a lot of times my hands are just too tired to actually reach into those back pockets and get it in and out and in and out and so this is the most awesome thing I tell you though I am going to order some more of these halo bands this one that I tried to repair didn't it's sort of repaired but I think I want some that actually are the right color oh and probably I should show you that with the with the new tires new wheels I ended up with new tires and so here's what I've got I did have um the Continentals on here and Bill has switched me to the Gator Skins and the Continentals had a red stripe on them. The Gator Skins don't so now my bike is not this really matters but now my bike is completely all gray and black and that's fine with me because usually I'm wearing Vander Kitten jerseys and they are all based on black and neon colors and I have hardly any red except for Road ID 
My red ID is on my foot, but my red ID jersey is red and black and white. Um, I did not know until I started cycling that all those colors and all that stuff matters. I had no idea. <laughs> it's not just form, fit, and function. There's also fashion involved in cycling. So here we have another post red critique kitty here. This is Jasper, and this is what's this one? Spook. This is Spooky right here. Hi, kitty. And Spook is an acrobat. He is practicing for a career in Key West. This is a good balancing act. What would you like to do now? Thanks for watching. Hope I solved that question for you. Will more expensive wheels make you go faster? Yes and no. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please use any of the links below if you're interested in any of the items that I showed or mentioned. I do keep a dog dazer right here and Saturday we had a really scary time. This dog came running up at us and I was so glad that we had them. Um, I've got a variety of lights on the bike. I even have a mask in the back here and uh, I'll, I'll kid it out. <laughs> ha ha ha. Yeah, I know. Funny fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.